again, my name is Chuck Collier. I'm a safety and security coordinator here at Dublin Schools. I just want to take a moment to thank you for watching these videos with us to learn a little bit more about the safety protocols that we have in place here at Dublin Schools. For our final interview, let's talk with Nick Magistrale, the athletic director at Scioto High School. Well, I see we have a big responsibility with athletics because so many adults are in front of our student athletes. So when I'm, as an athletic director, I'm looking at the athletic department's role in that. And we have over 120 coaches assisting in some way. Not all of those are paid positions. We have um, some volunteers, some uh, .5 supplementals. Uh, but when you have 120 people, it, um, it becomes quite challenging to track all of the uh, required certifications. Uh, so the most important thing is all of our coaches are required to, uh, to acquire a pupil activity permit through the Ohio Department of Education. And in order to do so, they have to complete a number of certifications in order to even apply for that application. Um, so each coach, I can run through them very quickly. Uh, you have the Fundamentals of Coaching uh, course through the National Federation of High School Sports, uh, the NFHS Concussion and Sport. We have, uh, you have to have a CPR certification current you have to have the sudden cardiac arrest, which is Lindsay's Law, and that was implemented in the state of Ohio a few years back. Um, also have to have the, uh, the first and foremost, everyone has to have a, a valid BCI, FBI background check before they're ever allowed to uh, have any interaction with our students here in Dublin City Schools. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of things. And in order to track that, as an athletic department, we use a system called Final Forms. And the nice thing about that system is it sends our coaches updated reminders, a 60-day, a 30-day, a 15-day, and a 4-day reminder that uh, a specific certification is set to expire. Uh, so they have ample warning that they need to get that renewed to uh, remain coaching here in Dublin City Schools. Absolutely. Uh, well, you take a home football game, for instance, as that would be the best example, just as the uh, largest uh, spectator capacity. Um, that's our biggest event. And you have to think of all the entrances and different areas where um, you want to just make sure that we have enough safety and security. So the first thing we do is determine how large the event is, and that would... Uh, determine how many um, special duty officers we get from uh, the Dublin Police Department. And uh, we additionally hire uh, CSC security and they uh, help assist with whatever we need. So depending on the game, a normal game we have five uh, officers and a couple CSC security people helping out. But if we are playing a sister school uh, Dublin Coffin or Dublin Jerome or uh, the Battle of Hard Road versus Worthington Kilbourne is our biggest rivalry. Uh, we will ramp that up and increase those numbers as needed. Absolutely. Uh, we always make sure for our home events that there is an administrator in addition to myself and or the uh, faculty manager uh, site manager personnel. Uh, we always have one of our building administrators there and uh, that serves the purpose of just monitoring the student section uh, behavior wise and making sure the kids do remain safe in that environment. They know the kids, uh, they know them by names and faces and can identify them if uh, there's any disciplinary action necessary. So it's very important to have those individuals at the athletic contests as well. You'd rather over communicate than under communicate so uh, prior to any large athletic contest we send information to the opposing school athletic directors and coaches and uh, sometimes administrators as well depending on the magnitude of the event and that way everyone has a full understanding of what the expectations are we can also bring up potential concerns. Things may come up on social media that week that 
maybe folks are unaware of. And by us bringing that to everyone's attention, we can be on high alert uh, to make sure you know nothing negative occurs in that situation. Well, you want to first kind of just take a step back and look at the entire situation, as long as it's not an immediate emergency type of situation. And then you want to figure out with the team you have in place, again, going back to a home football game, we have at least uh, 10 people working the admissions gates and scanning tickets at the entries uh, to the stadium. We have gate personnel at every gate uh, entry to the stadium to the field area. We have our admin team, and as we mentioned before, the, sec the security folks. So you look at all of those different pieces of uh, what I would just call event personnel, and then determine who needs to be contacted in what order to address whatever situation's occurring. If it's a very serious situation, um, the first call is going to be to the officer in charge of the special duty unit uh, so they can act appropriately. And then we work our way down depending on the severity or if it's just, you know, something like a, uh, a younger student, uh, maybe even a non-high school student um, just misbehaving or goofing around and uh, we may just reach out to the lower level administrative staff and see if they can help us out with that.